Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to learn about the abacus. So let's start off this expl exploration with a bit of history. So I will now introduce a tool that will change the way you view mathematics. Did you know that people used it before actually using numbers? The abacus or origins traced back to the, to the Babylonians in 2400 BCE who first used the device by tracing lines on sand and placing pebbles which represented counting figures. The actual date and location of the first signs of the counter abacus with strings is unknown, but many historians estimate it to, be, to originate from India, Mesopotamia, or ancient Egypt. It was later developed and adopted to serve the needs of many different people, such as Greeks, Romans, and Chinese societies. The abacus was used by a range of different professionals, such as educators, such as scientists, math mathematicians, and also clerks and merchants. It was a tool that allowed these users to make calculations with bigger and thus more complex numbers, which increased their productivity, productivity given its ability to make faster arithmetic calculations compared to other devices and strategies at the time. So it's important to note it's used for arithmetic calculation. This made the abacus pivotal in the development of mathematics. After all, it was considered as the first human-made calculator and revolutionized early math mathematics. <laughs> By the end of this class, we will learn how to use the abacus to perform several mathematical operations. In other words, adding and multiplying, for example, will now be visual to you. Now, we will go back in time to the origins of the first abacus and learn from an expert in how to use it. So what is this device here? How is it used? Well, first, this device is called an abacus, and it's used for basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. That's pretty cool. So what does each bead individually in each row or column represent? Each single ball in each row of the abacus represents the numbers 1 through 10 multiplied by 10 according to which row the beads are in. For example, this row, these beads represent 1, 2, 3. In this row, the beads will represent 10, 20, and 30. And in this row, the beads will represent 100, 200, and 300. All right, so how do you add and multiply in the abacus? All right, so let's say we're adding eight plus seven. First, we start off by sliding eight beads in the bottom row to the right. Next, we count off the numbers in the second number, seven, one by one. One, two. Now that we've, we have no other beads in this bottom row to slide to the right, we move all of these beads to the right back, slide one over in the row, to, row above the bottom row to represent 10, and then we have five, five left from the previous number because we only slid over two. So now we, we have to slide over five. One, two, three, four, five. And you see we're left with 10 plus five equals 15. When you slide over one of these beads in the second to last row, in exchange for 10 of the beads in the bottom row. In essence, you are substituting 10 single beads for one bead representing 10 beads. You can think of this as substituting 10 $1 bills for one $10 bill. That's pretty cool. But how can you multiply numbers on the abacus? All right, so multiplying on the abacus is slightly more complicated than adding on the abacus. So let's say we want to multiply three by four. We will have to slide three beads in the bottom row to the right, and then four beads in the top to the right, representing the operands, three times four. Now we will slide over one of these beads in the top, representing one group of three. 
So now that we've represented one group of three being multiplied, that is the same thing as one group of three single beads on the bottom being slid to the right. Now we will have to slide over three beads to the right on the bottom row and then one more bead on the top, representing another group of three. Same thing goes for the next group of three. Now we will have to, for the last group of three, we'll have to slide this bead over. So that's one out of the three last group of three. So we slide this over, we have two left. So just like in the addition problem, we slide one bead in the top in the row above the bottom row to represent 10, and then we slide over the, the bottom two. And then this is the last group of three being multiplied, or I guess added in a sense. And we are left with one 10 and two singles, adding up to 12. The abacus can be essential to a child's early mathematical understanding. Let me give you the facts here. UC San Diego, yes, UC San Diego psychologist David Barner led a study where he argues that abacus training can significantly boost math skills with effects potentially lasting for decades. He says, and I quote, based on everything we know about early math education and its long-term effects, I'll make the prediction that children who thrive with the abacus will have higher SAT scores later on. If you want your kid to go to Topton school, you have to get the abacus. Trust me, unless they won't just get in. It's happened time and time again. Call the number on the screen below. You gotta get ahead of the game, people. 1-800-ABACUS, don't forget the second S. More of the boring stuff here, but it's also important. While using an abacus, use different senses of the body simultaneously, sight, sound, and hand coordination, in addition to physical and logical actions, which stimulates brain development at an early age. But most importantly, the abacus turns math into a physical representation of calculations. Some kids are just visual learners and need to see how to do things. The abacus is perfect for that. Only $19.99 today, free shipping and handling. 1-800-ABACUS, don't forget the second S.